Yo, welcome back. This is Stu42 with another Minecraft video. Today we're going to do a very quick how-to video on ethanol crystals. So as you can see in front of me, I'm, I'm not going to introduce for too long. I'm just going to get straight into it with today's episode. Uh, as you can see in front of me, we have a sugar farm. Uh, I have used the multi farms. I know some of you prefer the, uh, I think it's forestry that has the, you know, the harvester and bits and pieces. I, for some reason, I just love these multi farms I don't know why I know they need fertilizer and a bit of extra management but but I just tend to like them and prefer them so with this I've got a minimum size multi farm which is the uh, the central block of three by three and this goes down four blocks uh, and then there's underneath all of this you can see under the water there's a stone bricks so everything is stone bricks uh, in here I have put uh, an intricate circuit board set to manual farm with uh, reed farm. So the manual farm uh, with your soldering iron, you set to manual and then you put uh, diamantine uh, tubes in it and that will set it to reeds. With the reeds, you have to plant them yourself. So this is the pattern that I have chosen uh, because you need a water block next to every uh, every sugarcane this seems to be one of the best patterns that i've found which is essentially uh full stripes of sand so if you go one over you can walk all the way from one side to the other along a strip of sand uh, and then alternating water sand water sand water sand for each block and then uh, different again like offset by one between here and here uh, a couple of these water blocks are actually outside the farm area uh, this one's outside the farm area this one here is outside the farm area uh, that's fine uh, all the better to uh, to make more use of the farm area uh, and what it will do is it'll grow to three blocks high and it will only ever harvest the very very top level leaving two blocks at the moment this is stopped so so this is where the sugar farm starts now over here if I've put in a little lift, so if I go underneath uh, and go over to our sugar farm. Now, as you can see, I've got a farm valve here, uh, got a reservoir, so that's feeding water. I have a furnace generator uh, stuck up against the farm gearbox, so that gives power. Uh, I have the farm hatch. I have the export bus on the side, which is set with a crafting card. And fertilizer so this is just set to use stocked items and or craft so the default mode uh, set to fertilizer and then the crafting card in there uh, and this is just an import bus on the bottom this signal here is set to 4,000 sugar canes so if I've got more than 4,000 sugar canes that applies a redstone thing which will stop this from running and that shows up as this that actually says no farmland uh, there is actually farmland but this is the same thing that shows up when you have that showing so that's pretty much that's pretty much the farm uh, the only other part of that is because I'm using applied energistics, I do need this modular assembler. And in the interface, not that interface, this one, if I hold down shift, I have this encoded pattern, which makes eight fertilizer with one appetite and two sand. Uh, and if we look in here, we have plenty of sand and way plenty of appetite. So, um, and four fertilizer sitting there. So there's more than enough to run that. Uh, 4,026 sugar, that's, uh, that's, quite a bit of sugar because when you pass this through a grinder you actually get three sugar out of it and then the sugar itself goes on to make quite a lot of sludge so how is everything controlled well the next step in the sugar is over here now i'm not using the second row of engines i'm just using this one so we have an engine here with an export bus export bus set to ethanol crystals so that keeps this fully stocked with ethanol crystals we have a grinder and an export bus again. Now this export bus is set to sugarcane, so it's going to export sugarcane, but I've got this redstone card in here, uh, and that is set to active with signal. So this won't export sugarcanes until there's a signal. And if we look in here, well, there's 63. I, I probably don't even need... Actually, that's a very, very good point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that, and that frees up a channel on my applied energistics. It means this is going to stay completely stocked. In fact, I can take that card out as well. This is going to stay completely stocked with the sugar. There we go. There's the 64. Um, but it doesn't really matter because it's not going to grind up until the motor starts. 
Now the motor sitting on an engine control unit, which I have set, I've shift right clicked with the screwdriver to be uh, redstone controlled. This here is set to emit when the level is above 2000 and this is set to ethanol. So if I've got 2000 ethanol, I'm going to stop the engine because 2000 is enough. Now what I'm going to do while I'm recording is I'm going to set this to 2500 ethanol. So this will grow my ethanol count to 2500 and then we'll stop the engine. So what this is doing now is this is grinding up the sugar. That'll get to normal sugar, three of them, and then the import bus on the side doom, 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 will suck out that sugar. From here, it's a straight run through. So we have this fermenter. Now we've got the lever here running the DC electric engine. This is just set to export that sugar into here. Um, underneath there is an export bus exporting dirt to keep the bottom fed with dirt. So the dirt's on the bottom, there we go, there's another sugar coming in, and that makes uh, this yeast, which is then just an import bus on the side. The second fermenter has to have the lever on the side. Now what I've found is these fermenters, where this target is, is with a redstone signal. So this engine is powered, I have to put the lever over here so that this stays in uh, stays in this uh, yeast mode. Over here I'm powering it with the, on the side so that I've got a redstone signal both making this engine run and changing this fermenter to be sludge. Similar setup here, exporting the yeast on top. Uh, under there there is an export exporting uh, my apple oak saplings which I have a ton of because of my tree farm and then an importer on the side set to nothing which is taking the sludge back out. From there, it's quite a process for ethanol crystals. <laughs> From there, over here, we have uh, this alloy smelter, uh, which is set to furnace mode only. It's powered, uh, it's actually powered by this uh, capacitor bank here. There's a, there's a cable running underneath. Uh, very simple, export bus set to export sludge, uh, import bus on the side, set to nothing. And this is basically taking the sludge, burning it into ethanol crystals, and that's pretty much it. So there we go, a uh, full rundown of a fully automated ethanol crystal setup. So now that I've changed that, if I go upstairs, we can watch this climb and the sugarcane. So sugarcane is set in one of these grey uh, barrels, which as I said in my last episode, will void if I have more than 4,096 sugarcane. Uh, so that's the maximum I can hold in there anyway. Uh, in here, if we go down to... Yeah, you can see the stuff flashing through. So we're already up to 2,115 of these. Uh, so not too bad. Not too bad. It's growing pretty fast. So I can produce ethanol crystals pretty quickly. Uh, and this is opening the way for me to use gasoline engines for a bunch of other stuff. So I'm going to try and get automated... Uh, automated grinders, uh, automated a bunch of things actually. You can get an extractor to run off uh, a single gas engine if you do some tricky things. Again, thank you Raker who makes the Rotorycraft mod. He's he's left a couple of intriguing comments on a couple of my videos uh, letting me know that I can do it with a gas engine. There's a couple of special blocks that I'm going to need to use that uh, hardly anyone use. I think I have a plan for how to do it. Um, it, it may be a bit... I may be trying to overcomplicate it, but we'll, we'll see how we go with that. And uh, as you can see, that's really flying through the ethanol crystals. So uh, not a problem there making those. So from here, those ethanol crystals uh, are used to make jet fuel as well. So one of my episodes coming up, I'm going to automate automate this. Now, you know, some of these things are easy. Coal, easy. Netherite dust, easy. Tar sand, pretty easy. Ethanol was kind of tough, but now that we've got that set, that's going to be easy. Uh, magma cream and blaze powder, not so easy. Uh, so, but I have a plan for that, so uh, we'll sort that out in an upcoming episode. Uh, other than that, I think that's pretty much everything, 4,012. Uh, I wouldn't mind showing you guys what happens when I take some take some sugar out. So, if I take half a stack out, that's now below 4,000, which means that, if I can run here in time, yep. The little indicator, the emitter's gone off. And if I go back upstairs and have a look, the tops of a lot of these should be... Oh, there we go. There you go. See, it's cutting just the tops off. And it'll cut enough tops off to 
make my count go above 4,000 again. There we go. There we go. I've obviously just got 4,000 in there now. Uh, but as you can see, it only chops the very, very top layer off. So I think this sugar farm is going to be more than big enough to keep up with my my ethanol demand. I wasn't sure, uh, but I, I built the biggest one I could. Uh, sorry, the smallest one anyway. I'll put this back in. Cool. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for this episode. We've gone from sugar growing on the ground to, to grinding the sugar up for uh, the actual sugar powder to fermenting it through both stages of fermentation. Uh, fermentation? I think it's fermentation. Both stages of fermentation uh, and then cooking the sludge into ethanol crystals uh, which as you can see yeah 2206 so already halfway there I increased by 500 and we've already got half of it so uh, you're pretty fast on the ethanol production. So yeah that is about it uh, as always thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next time.